Oh, hey, whoa. Um, sorry, I was just doing a little bird watching and, um, but I know why you're here. You're, you, you want to keep going with the Jigsaw Jones story and hey, I don't blame you. Uh, what's been happening? What has been happening? We're in chapter seven. Enter the snake pit. Jigsaw has entered Wingnut O'Brien's brother's room. Jake the snake. I'm the youngest of seven children growing up. I have four older brothers. And I have a lot of memories of like the brother's big room. You know, like those big brothers and what their rooms are like. And all of that mystery and intrigue. So I definitely have this sense of like what it's like for a kid to go into a big brother, a teenager's room. Like it smells different. It looks different. It's just weird. So that's what's happening here. Jigsaw is going in into Jake the Snake's bedroom. Ah! I must have jumped about 50 million feet. Myla pointed at a stereo speaker. There it was the rosy boa curled up in a ball. It looked calm and peaceful. The problem was it wasn't in a cage. I felt a little wiggle in my stomach. Wingnut said, don't be afraid. Jake lets him out of the cage all the time. I stood behind Mila. He's harmless, Wingnut said. Jake says that snakes are the most misunderstood creatures in the animal kingdom. Wingnut petted the snake's smooth skin. See, snakes don't like to bother anybody. Tell that to a mouse, Milo muttered. Or bunny, I added. I looked around. Jake sure had a weird room. The light bulbs were black. They gave off a strange light that made Milo's white shirt glow. He had posters all over the walls, mostly basketball stars, snakes, and a goofy one of a bunch of dogs playing cards. Go figure. Just then, the door flew open. It was Jake, and he looked mad. What are you pipsqueaks doing in my room? He roared. Didn't you read the sign? I felt another wiggle in my stomach. Wingnut stepped forward. Sorry, Jake. It was it was an emergency. He pointed at me. Jigsaw is a detective. He's trying to help me find Hermie. This piece of art. Let's see this. R. W. Alley. There they are. Jigsaw is not looking so good. Look at him there. He looks a little ill. Jake looked at me. A pipsqueak detective, eh? Well, try again, Sherlock. You can bet Hermes not in here, or else Goliath would have gotten him. Goliath, I guessed, was Jake's boa. Actually, I said I was wondering if Goliath had opportunity. Opportunity? Jake asked. Yes, I said. Could it have slithered into Wingnut's room? Jake shook his head. No way, no how. Goliath doesn't leave my room unless I take him. Are you positive? Myla asked. Sure I am, Jake said. Besides, if he got out, I would have known about it. Or my mom would have seen him. She's been vacuuming everything in sight for days. Jake picked up the snake. He brought him to Mila. Here, Jake said, touch him. Mila touched Goliath. He's not slimy at all, she said. How about you, Jake said. 
bringing the snake to me. Um, no thanks, I said. Jake brought the snake closer to my face. Come on, he said. Jake wasn't being very nice. After all, I didn't like snakes. My stomach jiggled and wiggled. I felt a little dizzy, uh, like I'd just eaten the wee hot dogs and got on a roller coaster about eight times in a row, like I was going to get sick or something. And I did. Right on Jake's sneakers. Chapter 8. Person, place, or thing. There was a knock on my bedroom door. I'm not here. I moaned. My brother Billy walked in. I heard about what happened. How you feeling, tough guy? He asked. Rotten, I said. Billy put down a plate of buttered toast and a cup of honey tea on my night table. Mom said you should try to eat something, he said. I'm never going to eat again, I said. Billy sat on the edge of my, bread, my bed. Don't take it so hard, chicks. Everybody throws up. Not on somebody's sneakers, I said. Billy smiled. I wish I'd been there to see Jake's face. He must have freaked. I sort of laughed, too. It was pretty funny. How's the case going? Billy asked. Rotten, I said. There's no way Jake's boa could have done it. I'm ready to give up. Billy put his hand on my shoulder. You'll solve the mystery, he said. Keep working at it. After the toast and tea, my stomach felt a little better, but my heart still felt lousy. I was worried about Hermie. Where was he? Could someone have stolen him? Was he still alive? I figured that working on a jigsaw puzzle might make me feel better. I had a new one that I hadn't opened yet. It was called Monsters of Hollywood. I laid all the pieces on the floor. You can't start a puzzle until you look at every piece. Jigsaws were like mysteries. That's it, I said. I grabbed my detective journal. Maybe I'd missed a clue. I needed to look at all the pieces again. In school, we were learning about parts of speech. I decided to do the same thing with the facts in the case. On top of one page, I wrote the word person. On the other next page, I wrote place. And on the other one, I wrote thing. Then I thought about everything that had to do with the case. And I mean everything. My final list looked like this. Three columns on the page. Person. Wingnut, Jake, Pet Storner, Jigsaw, me. Mila, Wingnut's mom, Miss Gleason. Place. World of Reptiles, my office, Wingnut's room, library, Jake's room, school, room 201. Thing. Hermie, Sammy, Goliath, Jake's snake, vacuum cleaner, vomit, hamster cage. It was mostly pretty easy. I wasn't so sure about the thing column. I mean, I knew Hermie wasn't a person or a place, but he seemed like more than just a thing. Looking at all the facts seemed to help. I thought about Wingnut and Hermie and Jake and World of Reptiles. Something was bothering me. I closed my eyes and tried to remember my visit to the store. I remember the man 
buying the mice. I remembered the poor bunnies. The nice lady's tattoo, the hamster cage. Then it hit me, clunk, like a baseball bat smashed into my head. When the lady pushed the hamster roof, it didn't budge. But in Wingnut's room, the hamster roof was loose. Not very loose, just a little. Maybe that was enough. Maybe. Hermie had escaped, after all. He might still be alive. Then I began to worry. How long could a hamster live without food? I switched off the light and went back to bed. School tomorrow. It was going to be another busy day. Chapter 9. Let's go for it. The Phony Clue. One thing about Chapter 9 I have to say, this book was written in 1998, 22 years ago. I've had the chance to uh, revise a bunch of Jigsaw Jones books. They have kind of different colors, and, and they're bigger, and kind of cool looking. But this book, the very first one I wrote, is out of print. I can't get it anymore. I've never been able to write it over or revise. Uh, so there's a big scene in here that involves a telephone book. Because when I wrote it, everybody in every home had a telephone book with everyone's phone numbers. Nowadays, people look on their phones for um, phone numbers or search the internet and get, we don't really use these big, fat, thick telephone books anymore. When I wrote this book, uh, Jigsaw did. Now, um, if I were to write the book over, if I got a chance to revise it, I might change that a little bit and change uh, how he gets a phone number. But anyway, anywho, let's do this. Chapter 9, The Phony Clue. Okay, class, Miss Gleason said, it's organization time. You know your jobs. At last, the school day was finally over. Now all we had to do was get ready for tomorrow. We had to clean up, sharpen our pencil, and get our coats. Plus, some kids had to do special jobs at the end of the day. There were board cleaners and book checkers, chair putter uppers and closet neateners and homework checkers. The best job was zookeeper. But our gerbil died a few weeks ago. So now there were only... Second, now we were the only second grade class in the whole school without a pet. We didn't need a zookeeper anymore. I had a free day, so I neatened up my desk super fast. I raised my hand, Miss Gleason, I said. Miss Gleason came to my desk. Thank you for raising your hand, Jigsaw, she said. And by the way, she whispered, How's that matter of life and death coming along? Not so great. I said I threw up on Jake O'Brien's sneakers yesterday. Oh, Miss Gleason answered, that's not fun. She moved back a step. And I have another problem. I told her that I needed a phone number. That's not a problem, she said. It is, I answered, if you don't know how. Miss Gleason walked to her desk. Here's a picture, by the way. There's Miss Gleason. And I love there's Danica Starling, who we feature her in another book later. She's in the case from uh, Outer Space. Others. Uh, Miss Gleason walked to her desk and pulled out a big, fat book. She explained, phone books are in two parts, Theodore. The first part is called the White Pages. It lists the phone numbers of all the people who live in our area. She flipped through the book. This other section is called the Yellow Pages. See? The pages are yellow. It lists the phone numbers for all the businesses. Super, I said. Could you tell me the phone number to the world of reptiles? Miss Gleason smiled. 
No, she said. You'll have to look it up for yourself. She handed me the book. Everything is in alphabetical order, she said, by category. Category? I asked. This wasn't turning out so hot. Yes, what kind of business is World of Rest Reptiles? Is it a restaurant? Do they serve lizard stew? Miss Gleason laughed at her own joke. I didn't laugh. I told Miss Gleason that it was the name of a pet store. Then you can start by looking under P for pets. Oh, brother, teachers, you try to get a simple answer, and all you get is more work. By the time I found the phone number, it was nearly time to go. I put on my jacket and lined up for the bell. I found a note inside my pocket. It was in code. 20, 8, 9, 19, 9, 19, 1, 6, 1, 11, 5, 3, 12, 21, 5. I knew the note was for Myla. She was always testing my brain power. I'd seen a code like this before. It was called a substitution code. All you had to do was write out the alphabet. Then you had to write the numbers 1 to 26 underneath each letter. They worked together in pairs. Each number in Myla's code stood for a letter. I solved it on the bus. Then I scribbled a quick message to Myla. I figured that I'd put it on her desk tomorrow. It looked like this. Boom. That's it for now. Um, you should try that substitution code on your own. Write out the alphabet. Put the numbers under each one. See if you can make your own secret message. Uh, next time I'm back, we are going to finish this book. We're going to solve the mystery. And thank you again for hanging out. Uh, I'm going to get I'm going to get all dressed up next time. Nobody's dressing. We're all stuck in our houses, and it's just the way it is. And um, but I am going to go back uh, do some more bird watching when you're while I'm waiting for you. So listen, take it easy. You are the best. I'm grateful for you. Be well.